Over the past six months, there has been a lot of hype and attention around the new M1 Max, and they have been available since November last year. So, which one do you choose, and what configuration do you go for? Let's talk all this in this video. First of all, which one out of the three? Well, the choice between the Mini and the MacBook Air and Pro should be simpler than choosing between the two laptops. If you want more mobile computing, you need a laptop. If you're primarily going to be working at a desk with a big external monitor, as many of us probably are with the change times, you may not think it, but you should give a serious look to the Mini. As I will tell you later on in this video, the MacBooks are not ideally suited to desktop style computing, mainly for two reasons, but more on this later. Additionally, you will get a lot more for your money in terms of RAM and storage if you choose the Mini. It also offers an additional HDMI port built-in, meaning even with the current limitation on M1 Max, you can natively run two external displays on the Mini. Now, the Mini and the MacBook Pro offer active cooling, or in simple words, a built-in fan. And for extended workloads, meaning either using intensive programs or doing a lot of multitasking all day and all night continuously, you may see the added performance benefit from the fan. Here, I say may because for the most part, the MacBook Air runs very cool and I've only seen it get warm on the bottom when connected to a 4K display and running intensive programs. That means that unlike with previous generation Macs with Intel processors, the impact of having a fan is much lesser on the performance for 90% of situations. So that brings us to the Pro and the Air. Here, there is no right or wrong choice, and rest assured, you will be fine with either. The differences in real-world usage are very little. You may be surprised to know this. So, we know that the fan makes only a small incremental difference in performance, and I can tell you from comparing the MacBook Air to my iPad Pro 12.9 that even with a lower overall brightness, the screen is quite readable even outside in the sun. And the other differences, such as slightly better speakers, slightly bigger trackpad, again will be of interest to those who have a specific need with regards to these. The point I'm trying to make here is that you will be well served by using your money to upgrade the internals of the machine you choose to buy. So now let's talk about RAM and storage. If I could get just one upgrade in terms of configuration and nothing else, it would be the RAM. Irrespective of whether you decide to get the Mini, the Pro or the Air, this is one upgrade that you will see a benefit from more and more as time goes by. Not only will you use a lot less of the swap file, an issue we have discussed in depth in another video, links on your screen and in the description below, but you will see that Safari and Chrome will kill your background web pages a lot less than with the 8GB version. This is something quite new in terms of Macs, even though you see this on iPhones and iPads. And nowadays, everyone uses a lot of tabs on Chrome and Safari. In terms of storage, yes, it takes a second place to RAM, and mainly because you can store files in the cloud, and also it's easy to get fast removable storage. I would say that 256 GB is the bare minimum nowadays, and 512 GB definitely gives you more room to copy and download large files, till you can move them to a different drive. If you use intensive programs that use a lot of cache, then again, you will benefit from the added storage. Look at it this way. If you can afford it, get the 512 GB version and upgrade the RAM to 16 GB. Otherwise, do upgrade the RAM, even if it means sticking with the 256 GB version. In fact, if Apple had offered the 16 GB RAM MacBook Air with 256 GB storage as a standard configuration, I would have picked it over the 8 GB 256 GB version in a heartbeat. This, by the way, is the 8GB 512GB version. Now let's talk about the different kinds of usage with these machines and who can get away with choosing which variant. Now over the past few months, a lot of interest has been generated in these powerful Macs and people have been asking about the M1 Mac suitability for various things like everyday tasks such as office programs, web browsing, Zoom calls, FaceTime, to more intensive stuff like AutoCAD and video and photo editing suites. In my experience, the 8GB RAM Air, the base computer, can run all of this stuff without much drama. 
you will only experience trouble when doing the most intensive things with these programs and trying to use other apps at the same time. But the point is, if that's what you're looking to do, even if you can get by with the 8GB variant, you shouldn't really get this. Because over time, the demands of such programs and even web browser based tasks is set to increase and the experience a few months or years down the line will not be as satisfying. For light and basic usage, do not even think twice. Just get the base variant and enjoy previously unseen levels of power in such slim and quiet form factors. But if you suspect you need more of anything, do get it and save yourself the heartache later. Now a little bit about the Macs expected in the near future. It's an open secret by now that there are brand new designs expected in terms of both desktop and laptop Macs. In fact, this is an added reason that I recommend the Air over the Pro, since the Pro will get updated most likely sometime this year itself with not only better processors but also a new design and a 14 inch display in the same overall body size. So unless you have a very specific and urgent requirement for a 13 inch MacBook Pro right now, I would wait for this design refresh. If you absolutely must get a MacBook right now, I'd suggest considering the MacBook Air and using the money saved to spec it up with more RAM and storage. The Air is not expected to be refreshed at least before 2022, so there isn't that danger with it of becoming obsolete quickly. And the M1 inside it is not only powerful enough for an Ultrabook, but it is probably overkill. So you're getting the very best in the business in terms of internals. Earlier on in this video, I spoke of why these MacBooks aren't ideally suited to be used as desktops. And the reasons are twofold. Firstly, the batteries inside these machines will last the longest if you charge and discharge them every day by making them go through a complete cycle over their design life. Being connected constantly to power does not help the health of your battery. So if using it always tethered to an external display is your plan, give serious thought about getting the mini instead. Secondly, there are currently dozens of issues with external displays when it comes to M1 Max. I have made at least four updates on this and you will find the links to those videos in the description. But it's just frustrating to use them with certain displays and currently the only reliable way to get display out is via HDMI cables. But that also means using a dongle or dock of some sort. Scale resolutions also cause problems when waking up from sleep and in general the Big Sur updates have failed to resolve these issues. I personally go through a very irritating ritual every day where I have to eject all my connected drives to the TS3 Plus dock, then pull the cable out and reconnect the cable to get any type of display via the HDMI connection. If I use USB-C for display, it only gives a 30Hz resolution. The iPad Pro or the older Intel MacBook Pro never had these issues. Now before we summarize things, let me add another dimension to all of this. If content consumption is your main requirement, or if you're an artist or a person that likes interacting with their device with touch, then seriously consider getting an iPad instead, especially if you have another computer that you will be keeping and not replacing. It's hard to explain, but the joy of using an iPad is such that it makes you want to replace your laptop with it, even though it can't even now in entirety. There is a refresh expected with an M1-like chip as soon as next month when it comes to the iPad Pro, so do watch that space if it interests you. If you wish to see a direct comparison between the iPad Pro and the M1 MacBook Air, I have a detailed video on this. You can watch that by clicking the link in the description. So let's summarize things. Most people should buy an M1 Mac. Nobody should buy the Intel Macs at this stage. If you work at a desk, you should buy the Mac Mini. If you need a MacBook, you should buy the MacBook Air. You should get the 16 GB RAM if you can, unless you're a very light user and intend to remain so for a long time. You should aim for 512 GB for storage as a minimum, but if for whatever reason you can't, you will be better served by getting the 16 GB RAM, even if it means only getting 256 GB of storage. You should not upgrade to any of these M1 Macs from recent Intel Macs with dedicated GPUs. The replacement for your Macs are coming pretty soon with even better processors and dedicated graphics. You should not buy the MacBook Pro 13 inch at this stage as there is a new model expected soon with a complete redesign, better processors and perhaps even more ports. And finally, if you're mainly a content consumer or perhaps an artist and have another computer, you should get an iPad instead. I've got a complete playlist on M1 Max that you should look at next, but as a bare minimum, do check out these two videos at least. Watch the RAM question in action 
and learn about the swap file issue. See you in the next one.